When we talk about pyramids, the best known and the first to come to mind are those of Giza and those of Mexico. But there are many other pyramids in Egypt, not to mention those in South America. There are also allegedly examples in Romania and Bosnia-Herzegovina, North America, China, Korea and Italy, though the evidence for the latter group is thin to say the least. One of the latest pyramids discovered is the apparently colossal pyramid in Romania, which would have to be, according to some alternative historians and researchers, more than 15,000 years old. For archaeologists and most researchers, it is merely a natural hill. But for some, this confirms that in the remote past, there were several pre-Diluvian civilizations that were responsible for creating these pyramids all over the world. The fact that the various pyramids scattered all over the world vary massively in date from prehistoric to medieval does not seem to bother these researchers. Apparently these ancient civilizations had the power and knowledge to travel between continents and thus were able, for a reason we still don't know, to build pyramids that were very similar. Usually the pyramids share a similar structure and were created as places of extreme importance to the daily life of the community, possibly ceremonial centres dedicated to the gods. Although we know of those pyramids that were built a few hundred, sometimes thousands of years ago, in recent years the evidence has been accumulating in regard to antediluvian civilizations, that is, civilizations that prospered before the last glaciation. This glaciation and the subsequent deluge occurred about 14,000 years ago. According to a few researchers, and apparently, these people lost in time would have been pyramid builders. The existence of these forgotten ancestors resides in ancient documents, such as the List of the Sumerian Kings, and in the timeline of the Egyptian pharaohs that governed until the moment the gods descended to the earth. For some, the most recent evidence of antediluvian civilizations would be the Bosnian pyramids, discovered in 2005 by Sam Osmanagic. These constructions above the village of Visoko have been dated by him to between 12,500 and 30,000 years. Osmanagic calls one the Pyramid of the Moon and claims it is the world's largest and oldest steppe pyramid. At the opposite side of town is the so-called Pyramid of the Sun, which at 720 feet dwarfs the Great Pyramids of Egypt. A third pyramid, he says, is in the nearby hills. All of them, he says, are at least 12,000 years old, despite the fact that during that time most of Europe was under a mile-thick sheet of ice and most of humanity had yet to invent agriculture. As a group, Osmanagic says, these structures are part of the greatest pyramidal complex ever built on the face of the earth. But archaeologists remain unmoved. The landform Osmanagic is calling a pyramid is actually quite common, agrees Paul Heinrich, an archaeological geologist at Louisiana State University. They're called flat irons in the United States, and you see a lot of them out west. He adds that there are hundreds around the world, including the Russian Twin Pyramids in Vladivostok. There is another interesting mound in the Carpathian Mountains, 1,000 metres above sea level, that has captured the imagination of some alternative history enthusiasts. This pyramid has a height of 300 metres. The Pyramid of Cheops in Giza is 150 metres high, and the Pyramid of Bosnia about 220 metres so the pyramid discovered in Romania would be more similar to that of Cheops and would be about 80 metres more than the Pyramid of Bosnia. Some researchers who climbed to the top of the mountain found remnants of ancient stone walls consisting of three layers of overlapping stone fixed together with clay, which is a material that provides extensive protection against rainwater and is also an excellent material with which to join stones together. Probably the most fascinating aspect of the fortification was the thick reddish-brown layer of material composed of mineral oxides that covered the outer wall of the pyramid. Based on the kind of plaster that covers up even the cracks between the stones, 
researchers were able to date the structure using a technique known as dowsing, which resulted in the stones apparently dating back to between 22,000 and 25,000 years old. Further proof of an advanced ancient culture in Romania that was able to construct huge pyramids are the clay tablets that were unearthed in Tătăria, Transylvania, bearing inscriptions belonging to the Vinca culture, who possessed a writing system which according to some predates that of the Sumerians. The inscribed clay tablets were found in a Neolithic context at Tătăria in Romania in 1961. The signs on the tablets are comparable with those of the script of the late pre-dynastic period in Mesopotamia. It seems unlikely, however, that the tablets were drafted by a Sumerian hand or in the Sumerian language of early Mesopotamia. The shapes of the tablets and some of the signs are paralleled in the Minoan scripts of Crete, but the tablets do not seem to be Cretan. There are indications that a similar use of signs, if not actual writing, was practiced in the rest of the Aegean and in the western Anatolia before the end of the 3rd millennium BC. A knowledge of writing or the use of signs derived from it may have spread to these regions and to the Balkans from Mesopotamia through Syria. This was perhaps one aspect of a common inheritance of religious or magical beliefs and practices. However, the authenticity of the engravings has been disputed from the beginning. A recent claim of forgery is based on the similarity between some of the symbols and reproductions of Sumerian symbols in popular Romanian literature available at the time of discovery. Some researchers have connected this strange Romanian text with what was allegedly found in the cave of the Taos, Ecuador. In 1976, a major expedition entered the cave in search of artificial tunnels, lost gold, strange sculptures, and a metallic library, supposedly left by a lost civilization aided by extraterrestrials. Among this group was the astronaut Neil Armstrong. The indigenous Shuar people of Ecuador have been entering the vast cave system on the jungle-covered eastern foothills of the Andes for centuries. They descend using ladders made of vines through one of three dangerous entrances, the largest of which is a 213-foot deep shaft that leads into a network of tunnels and chambers stretching for at least 2.85 miles. For the sure, these caves have always been a center for spiritual and ceremonial practices, home to powerful spirits as well as tarantulas, scorpions, spiders, and rainbow boas. As guardians of the cave system, the Shua have been left in relative peace over the last century or two. However, in 1971, Erich von Daniken's The Gold of the Gods was published, and in it he told the obscure story of one Janos Juan Moritz, an explorer who claimed to have entered the caves in 1969. Inside the cave, he said, he had discovered a treasure trove of gold, strange artifacts and sculptures, and a metallic library containing lost texts preserved on metal tablets. And the caves themselves were definitely man-made, he claimed, created by some advanced intelligence now lost to history. Back to the pyramids. According to some researchers and authors, some pyramids could be connected by underground tunnels that stretch for thousands of miles. This has apparently been proven by the use of probes, which send electromagnetic impulses through the earth, and have found extensive cavities that are hundreds of thousands of miles long. But the main problem with this theory of a single ancient global super race building the pyramids is that it does a great disservice to our ancestors. Some supporters of the theory, such as Eric von Daniken and Zechariah Sitchin, claim that the ancient Egyptians were too backward to have constructed the pyramids without the help of extraterrestrials. However, it is undeniable that with so many ancient enigmas only now being brought to light, it is should not surprising that future archaeological advances and discoveries will force us to rethink 
at least some aspects of what we know of the history of mankind. But it should be the study of real, not imagined ancient monuments like pyramids that will help us in these endeavours.